Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, September 13th. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Weather Service, the National Hurricane Center, and your local officials for the best information for your location. We're still watching Tropical Storm Nicholas today in the western Gulf of Mexico, nearing landfall now along the Texas coastline. That's likely to occur sometime late tonight or early tomorrow morning. And we'll take a close look here at the visible satellite picture. This is Mexico, Texas here. And we'll see a semblance of rotation as some of these mid-level clouds evaporate during the last couple of hours. Southwest wind down here. You'll see northeast wind coming into the coastline of South Texas, broadly outlining the circulation somewhere in this area here. You'll immediately notice that a lot of the deep whites here, the cauliflower tops, Deep thunderstorms are all off to the northeast of this position, and we don't see a whole lot happening on the west and southwest side of the system. This is an indication of the southwest shear that we talked about, which is beginning to pick up now as the storm moves toward the coastline, and this is thankfully limiting the storm's intensification at the moment. And if we look under the hood from the Brownsville, Texas radar, this is from Mark Nissenbaum's FSU page, we'll see an even more complex structure evolving. We actually have multiple mesovortices within the center of Nicholas. The overall circulation is here, but you'll see a little bit of a meso coming up here. You'll see it spinning and then moving up, and that's been tracking northeast to the east of Brownsville over the last few hours. We have a second one somewhere around here, which is counter-propagating down toward the south. So it's important not to focus on either one of these as they do not reflect the actual center of Nicholas. In reality, it's really two different ones that are orbiting the average or what we call the mean center, which is kind of in between them, like the centroid of orbiting planets, for example. And this in general is continuing to head northward toward the general direction of Matagorda Bay, which is up here, and Port O'Connor. Now this is good news because these two mesovortices together indicate that the core of Nicholas remains fairly broad as opposed to tightly wound. And if, for example, this meso here was the main center and we had a very tight, tightly wrapped a band of thunderstorms around a center, we could be seeing more rapid intensification of Nicholas, but instead we have a broad center and that facilitates a slower rate of organization as this nears the coast. This is the recon data from the plane that's been in there, and for a while it was tracking that southern mesovortex as it moved northeast. We've seen on radar that has continued racing northeast, and they went up here and they just found on the last pass the second mesovortex that is moving toward the southwest. You can see that west wind to southeast wind shift there, and so really the, the plane is finding both centers of circulation at the moment. Again, the average of the whole thing is pretty broad. You can see that on the south side, the green wind barbs here indicate that the southern wind max is down there. And you'll note that winds are fairly light, blue, green, and white all through this area where the circulation is. And the strongest winds are way up here to the northeast, very strong southeasterlies way to the northeast of this broad overall center that is somewhere in here between the two mesovortices. Again, this indicates that the structure is still fairly broad in part thanks to the wind shear that is ongoing. And as this whole thing kind of moves northward toward the coastline, we'll get the strong banding in winds on the northeast side, and that is likely where they will remain. And it will probably be a struggle for that rough weather to wrap around all the way to the west side of Nicholas's circulation. And so it's really about the north and east sides of center uh, that we're worried about going forward. This is the water vapor satellite loop showing the shear that is now picking up. We've got southwest flow bending out of the west aloft. You'll see all these milky white cirrus clouds streaming that direction left to right. Again, Nicholas is centered kind of in here, and most of the cloud cover is getting fanned out to the east of the center due to the southwesterly flow now pushing on the storm, and that flow gets stronger as Nicholas moves toward the coast. So this will continue to shear the storm, and it's unlikely at this point to be able to intensify a tremendous amount. We could see a slight uptick in wind speeds. Right now they are, let me just check the advisory, about 60 miles per hour, NHC is saying, based on the plane data. And we could see them slightly tick up, but we're unlikely to see significant intensification. And right now it's not looking like this will become a hurricane with winds of 75. Still an outside chance, but I would say less likely at this point. Uh, given that the storm is still broad and fairly disorganized.
Now what is going to be a concern is as this moves in the general direction of Matagorda Bay, we are going to start getting these rain bands lashing the shoreline gradually from the southeast and as rain stays mostly on the north and east side of center, as the storm moves inland over eastern Texas, we are going to see a corridor where heavy rain occurs over the southeastern Texas coastline and into Louisiana and perhaps Mississippi as well. This is one depiction of that on the HER model, which is a short-term high-resolution model, showing Nicholas down here and with a lot of these rain bands kind of rotating toward the coastline. And you'll see as I loop this forward, this kind of depiction that these bands will start scraping the coastline, not really penetrating very far inland here, uh, but there's a, an extent about 50 to 100 miles inland where we get a corridor of really heavy rain starting to come down as the storm moves north or north northeastward and you'll see how this storm goes just west of Houston but most of these rain bands stay on the north and east side so you'll see how this happens and this could result in really heavy rains overall near and to the east of the storm track as the center moves inland and we'll see this spread into Louisiana by Tuesday morning with all of this rain coming in. And of course flash flooding is a danger if any of these bands happen to train over the same areas for hours at a time and we are expecting over a foot of rain in spots here and so flash flooding potential is high in a lot of these areas in southeast Texas and southwest Louisiana and that's what we see on the NHC forecast showing that the track again will go generally west of Houston and then turn eastward into Louisiana and to the right of that track and along that track is where the greatest axis of flash flood potential is outlined here in red and even a little bit of very high risk along the southeast coast of Texas between Matagorda Bay and Galveston on this current forecast. And this is that track forecast, probably should have shown you this first, but again, you can see that coming in to the northwest of Houston and then turning into Louisiana as it weakens inland. Right now, landfall is expected near Port O'Connor sometime overnight, Monday night or early Tuesday morning. There is still a hurricane watch here, but again, not seeing a lot of indications right now that that's a tremendous concern. Winds will be stiff though, and at the coast, a small area of winds near 60 miles per hour is likely as this comes ashore, but those winds will decay quickly as you go further inland from the coast. We do have a tropical storm warning along the entirety of the Texas coastline for winds greater than 40 miles per hour. And you can see here right now outlined in orange is the size of that area where winds are greater than 40 miles per hour. You can see the center of Nicholas is there. So this is mostly on the east and north side of the center. And this area of wind will be translating along this forecast track and scrape that whole coastline of Texas as it moves toward Houston and then into Louisiana. This is the storm surge forecast. That wind, that core of wind moving up the coast like this will be pushing some water from the ocean toward the coastline causing rises above normally dry ground so we see values of several feet along the whole Texas coastline and even southwest Louisiana could see elevated water rises in the barrier islands and the bays in areas that would normally be dry and that's also a concern so mostly water related hazards here wind will occur but it's not the greatest danger with nicholas mostly the rainfall and flash flooding and the potential for some coastal surge are what we're watching for so that's about it for nicholas we are going to briefly mention this area we've been talking about in the last few videos this is the southwest atlantic showing this this upper low that's near Hispaniola here aloft. This is moving off toward the southwest. There's another upper level trough up here to the northwest. And in between these, models still expect the potential for some kind of surface low pressure area to develop. Not seeing anything here. All easterly wind so far at the surface on this satellite loop. Not really seeing any evidence of a strong surface trough right now, but models do still expect perhaps this will move off toward the northwest and something could develop. And this is the GFS ensemble showing all these red numbers indicating potentially a weak or moderate area of low pressure developing by Wednesday night, Thursday morning as it kind of moves up toward North Carolina. And you'll see this general track is still projected to be east of Cape Hatteras. The European model also hints at this, not really anticipating really strong odds of a bona fide tropical system to develop out of this, simply because if we look at the upper levels, this is where you know there could be a pocket of light flow that could allow something to organize, but it very quickly shifts back into kind of a southwest 
sheer kind of scenario. And forming underneath of an old upper level trough is not necessarily the most favorable place for something to spontaneously form. And right now we're not, again, seeing anything anchoring a disturbance out here in the lower level. So this would have to basically arise out of nothing. And we could get some sort of broad trough of low pressure here. And there is some chance of tropical development, but it's not particularly concerning at this time. And HC is actually giving us a 50-50 shot. And we'll see if something is able to spin up here, but for the moment it would likely stay to the east anyway. If it does form, we'll be keeping a wary eye on that over the next few days as we head into midweek, just in case. And as one more note, we also have a tropical wave coming off of Africa. This is likely now to develop 80% chance from NHC as it moves into the central Atlantic. And exactly how far north it moves during that track is currently a question. It's going to take in excess of five days to get out into this area where it could, in theory, threaten the eastern Caribbean islands. Or maybe it goes north of them, but right now... Not talking about this one a lot just yet. In a couple days, if this comes out and does form, we'll start talking about it. But for now, it's about a week away from potentially threatening any land areas if it's going to. So it's still a little bit of a long-range forecast on that one. We'll see how it looks if it gets out here and actually forms a closed vortex and becomes a storm. High chances of that at some point later this week. That's it for now, everyone. Stay safe. Thanks for watching.